You can waste an awful amount of time messing around with color schemes and formatting in Excel. So coming up, my best tips on how to make Excel reports look great fast. Hi, I'm John, Qualified Accountant with 25 years real world Excel experience. And if you want to save time in Excel, then hit that subscribe button to hear all about my time saving tips. Now, today we're talking about Excel colors and I'll give you a good rundown about how to save a lot of time messing around with Excel colors. But first off, straight off the bat, keep it simple is my number one tip. Right. There are a ton of uh, theme colors in Excel, plus some standard colors which are here on the left of the screen. And honestly, the moment you move away from those, you are costing yourself time. Now, I will come on to how you can adjust these quickly and uh, mess about so that you don't, um, you know, you don't waste time perfecting things. But seriously, if you can stick to standard and theme colors, you're going to save a whole load of time because after the standard, uh, and I mean the standard colors here, because you move on to these standard colors, you've got to remember exactly which one you picked. I know like, you know, as you use them, they'll come into, they'll come up on your list of recent colors. But generally speaking, you know, if you open other spreadsheets or, you know, next time you go into Excel, that stuff disappears. You've got to remember which ones you're picking to mean what. Just honestly, keep it simple. And as for moving down here, there's only one reason you should be in a screen like that. And that is if you're trying to exact match an image. And I will come on to how you do that as fast a way as possible without kind of guessing and stuff. OK, so in Excel, what I'm talking about is you, you drop down on the sort of color picker here. It's You've got all these standard colors and all these theme colors here. And it's if you hit that more colors that you're going to end up in a screen like this. All right. And only if you go to custom, you know, and you can tweak basically everything. You can move this thing around and, you know, and change these settings and stuff. But I'm not going to do that. So like I say, keep it simple. Right, there is an important distinction between the theme and standard colors in Excel. And it's, it's straightforward, really. Standard colors stay standard no matter what the theme. Theme colors change. Do oh, I might say, right, pretty obvious, but it's actually very important. And the other thing that stays standard is any other color you pick, whether it be like a detailed color or, you know, one of the ones I showed you a minute ago, they all stay standard too. And so the problem with that is that you will, you know, you can set up a report to look great using all these sort of custom colors and things. And then every time you want to tweak something, you've got to change that color throughout the entire spreadsheet. Whereas theme, if you switch themes, everything's going to change. So let me show you what I mean in Excel. So on screen, I've got all the standard colors here, and then I've got a bunch of cell styles that you just get from this menu here. Um, and I've like laid out every single one of them. And just so that you can see, if I go on to page layout and then colors, and I'm currently in this office theme here, but as I hover over other themes, colors themes, sorry, everything changes. And you can see all of that is changing. And anywhere I'd use these theme colors would also be changing. So another example here is I've got a little kind of grayed out kind of dashboard. It's got a pivot table, which I've used a standard uh, style on. It's got, um, you know, a slicer that I've used a standard, you know, style on. And it's got shapes that I used a standard style on. And again, if I go on the page layout, and hover over any other theme, you can see everything's changing. Some pretty hideous, I must admit. But, you know, it's an instant new look to your report if you built it in theme colors. Now, why, you know, what if, for example, I came over here and I said, oh, you know, I don't know, that's a shocking number there. I'm going to mark that in red. And of course, if I mark that using, you know, if I do say this orange, for example, I've got a dark orange of the theme, that's going to change with the theme. 
But if I use sort of this red or this red to mark it as a problem, then it doesn't matter now what theme I use to change, what theme I change to, that is still going to be red. So that is why it's an important distinction. And my top tip for uh, standard colors are for exactly that kind of thing. If you want a color to mean something, um, like it's a good, you know, bad variance, you know, good result, bad result, it's an input cell, it's, I don't, I don't know, some kind of, um, you know, standard sort of output or number to track or check cell, any kind of like thing that you use on multiple spreadsheets, standard colors are the way to go. Anything you want to look good, you know, some kind of report or things like that, theme colors, that's the way to go. And the reason for that is because theme colors, when you want to change reports, are super fast, as I just showed you. You know, you can have entire pivot tables, tables, slices, you know, cell styles, etc., etc. Just change as you change the theme. You can still waste a lot of time messing around trying to find the perfect theme. So my top tip is have your own theme. Now, I don't mean spend the next two weeks perfecting a theme, you know, get, employing professional sort of color pickers and things like that. What I mean is preferably pick one of the standard office themes and call it your own because, you know, got to be at least 99%, if not more, of all Excel users will be using the standard office theme. And if you start chucking out reports in any theme other than that, you're going to stand out. And it's a simple one click of a button to do it. So imagine I say, right, my theme is going to be from now on um, aspect, right? So I'm going to be checking out reports that they, maybe they look like that, tables look like that. And this is my kind of color scheme. And, you know, I'm going to use that in everything I do at work. And it's going to stand out from the crowd. And people are instantly going to notice, you know, they're going to know it's from me chances are, you know, no one else is going to copy it. And not only that, you're going to be able to get to it on anyone else's machine. The problem is, um, I'll come on to in a second about customizing themes, but the moment you start customizing a theme or creating a brand new one, you know, it's only going to be available on your machine or like your work profile or whatever, your roaming profile. And so you just got to be mindful of that. And if you're doing it at home or anything, you get a brand new computer or anything like that, you're going to have to recreate it. So time saving tip really is you know stick to one of the office themes but there is a very important point about them and that is that the certain things in the theme always come from the first color now by the first color what i mean is actually believe it or not the fifth sorry fifth column here and it's called accent one and you'll notice that other things if you hover over them this is called, you know, that has different names. So they have like various names, for example, whereas this is accent one, accent two, I and mean, they've still got a name, but a lot of things come from accent one. And if you knock out, you know, if you sort of produce an instant chart, Alt F1, if you need the shortcut key for that, it will always just, you know, draw whatever the first series one is in accent one, series two in accent two, et cetera, et cetera. And you can use this to your advantage because Knowing that a default will go to accent one, if you don't like, if you don't want all your defaults appearing in orange, say you want them in blue instead. So we'll go to the theme that we like, which is I like aspect and customize it. And what we'll do is we'll call that changed aspect. And all we're gonna do is switch the order around and the great thing is that because you're in the theme, when you click on changing accent one, you get the actual sort of theme colors as they are. So maybe you say, well, I want the um, the blue to be the, you know, the first one, then the red, um, then the, the green, and then the orange, um, you know, and you're kind of happy with the rest of it. And when I save this, you should see, yeah, it switches the order on this and the underline on that, for example, which is the cell styles headings, the underline has changed to pick up that theme. 
And if I'd had like a default chart or something, that would have immediately switched series one to be in blue. So you can save a lot of time by just changing the order of your favorite theme and picking it up because now, even if someone else is using this theme now in your corporate environment, they're likely to have left it as it is. And so their charts will be coming out with the, you know, the orange, you know, orange lines on them and a lot of their stuff will be coming out with orange, whereas yours will now look a bit different again. Very quick and easy to do. Now, while I'm kind of in this customizing themes thing, just worth noting as well that dark one and light one always leave as black and white. And the reason I would say that is because when you go on a drop down here, if you leave that one as white and you leave that one as black, all of these shades of gray will always be the same no matter what theme you're picking and going through. So you don't want to be like picking out sort of mid gray and things like that and having them changing because mid, you know, the grays and the blacks and the whites, they tend to go with like every other color. So um, leave those as they are. Now, this one, uh, the dark gray text is being used in a cell style here. So this text here is picking up on that one. So just be mindful if you change that, you can see in fact, it blanks out that text that that, that is being used there. So there's one other thing you might want to do with your own theme, and that is, you know, whack in a couple of corporate colors, for example. Now, Google is uh, it's very easy to just search for the hash codes of their colors. I did it online and I just copied and pasted uh, on a slide here. But what if, uh, you know, you don't have the luxury of working for some huge company and knowing the sort of hash color codes of all your colors? You can simply use the eye drop feature. So it's providing you've put some shapes and you need to be doing this in PowerPoint. Um, Excel doesn't have this feature. You go into, you create a shape um, where I, I just put in, you know, put in a shape and you go to shape fill and you hit on eyedropper. And when you're in that, you hover over any color on screen. And if you leave the cursor for long enough, it will come up with the RGB code, which is what you need in order to customize a color. But actually you can do better than that because you can get a hex color. So if you click on a block of the right color, so once you've like color dubbed it, go to shape fill and more fill colors and you'll get you know something very similar and you can just copy and paste that hash code there. So let's do this for the Google blue. We'll hit OK and we'll go back into Excel. We'll go to our theme and we'll let's change aspect, let's edit it. And let's say we, we're gonna put this as, you know, we don't like this color anyway. So we're gonna change accent six to that one. So by hitting on more color, you can do this, change it there, hit okay, let's change it to that blue. We can now save it. And we have our corporate color as accent six. And whenever we go now to a color here, We've got this corporate color there and we've got various shades of it, which may or may not be a good idea, depending on, you know, how strict your company is and its logos, etc. But that what's called blue aspect six is actually the Google blue now. And what that means is if I go to say this report and well, not this report, let's go to the table here and on table design menu. Now I now have the facility to, you know, create tables using that very blue that I've just picked up on as well as all because it's now as you know accent six so that's how you can build in some corporate colors into your color palette just basically copy the hash codes from PowerPoint by filling a shape using the eyedropper so my best tips for coloring things in fast with Excel is of course use all the styles and stuff that are built in and then keep it simple. Stick to the theme and the standard colors on the very first drop down and you know just bear in mind use the standard colors when you want things to stay the same and flag up cells. Use the theme colors for all your report designs so you can quickly switch and mix and match and you know make things look different instantly. 
you know, and a lot of stuff can be looking different. You know, if you stick to, like I say, cell styles and standard styles for tables and pivot tables and slices, instant change of look and feel. And, you know, if you need to do it a bit more, stick with, you know, changing themes within Office and then just tweak them a little bit to get the order right so that you pick up accent one as your favorite color. And then, you know, if you really need to go further and pick up a key sort of corporate color or perhaps, you know, a favorite logo or something, you know, you can quickly do that with the eyedropper in PowerPoint. Hope all that is going to save you a heck of a lot of time wasting and messing about. Just pick your, pick your theme and stick with it. And if you want more time saving tips, hit that subscribe button because there's tons on this channel and you'll be reminded of them as long as you hit that bell icon when they come out. See you soon.